Okay. This is Paula from Plant Lamb with another of our series of uh, classes on individual vegetables. And today I'm going to babble at you <laughs> about carrots. Carrots are one of those things that are very, very easy to grow. We're very fast approaching the time when our uh, soil temperatures are warm enough to start planting carrot seeds. We're probably within a couple weeks of that in large parts of the valley. So carrots are one of those things that we can do very early that really like our Montana cool weather. And carrots are something that um, you sow in soil, uh, directly in the soil. You don't have to worry about planting uh, anything to start ahead of time or anything like that. They'll germinate just fine here and they'll grow to uh, maturity in about 60 days. Most varieties are about 60 days. So it's plenty of time when we talk about that. We're talking about from the germination of the seed to when you get a full-size carrot. It's about 60 days. Plenty of time in our Montana growing season. Um, carrots come in lots and lots of varieties. This little fingers, the, the thing that always cracks me up about this is that then the back they tell you the story about grocery store carrots. The baby carrots are actually big carrots that have been whittled down. Not always the best carrots either that have been whittled down. Little fingers are actually little carrots. They're something that you can grow really easily um, and get the fresh carrot taste, that really sweet taste of a good carrot in a small compact size. I usually grow danners, that's a typical uh, uh, standard size carrot, we'll call it. Um, it's a really good one, really sweet, really good flavor, really good for our, here in Montana. And then there are other varieties we have. We have rainbow varieties, we have some that are shorter and fatter, there's all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to use the carrots as an opportunity to talk a little bit about these seed packs. This is a company called Botanical Interest at Plantland, we've sold their seeds for a long time. Um, I really like botanical interests, uh, seeds and seed packets. On the back of their seed packet, well, we'll start with the front actually. The front of their seed packet, they tell us um, how many days it takes. They tell us a little bit about the, the uh, product, the vegetable itself. And then when you turn it over, you see good information about how deep to plant the seeds. It's important to, to plant them at the correct depth for carrots. It's a tiny little seed. You don't want to plant them too deep. Um, it tells you their spacing, it tells you a little bit about thinning, and it tells you uh, when to sow and when to harvest. The other thing that's really cool about these seed packets is that if you very carefully, and I didn't very carefully open this up, if you very carefully open these up, and you'll see that it's meant to do so, you will get more information than you wanted on carrots and just about all the other vegetables you can imagine. They usually tell you a little bit of history, they go into more um, specific detail about growing uh, the vegetable, you'll often find soil pH requirements, all kinds of good tips and hints on the inside of these seed packages. So it's a very good idea, well first of all not to cut it open like I did <laughs> on this one. Um, to be a little bit careful, it's pretty. It's really pretty easy to get the flaps open, and you'll see that there's just all sorts of information inside these packets that's really good. Um, carrots are another one of those ones that we need to thin. I've lost my. Oh, there it is. We need to thin once they come up because we almost always sow the seed too thickly. It's a very tiny seed, and it's very hard to get it uh, spaced correctly. Sometimes people say that you should mix these tiny kinds of seeds with something like sand so that you can actually have more of a, a, a way of telling. If you mix it with some white sand, you have a way of telling where you've sown. Makes it a little bit easier to keep track of. Um, I've, done, I've done things like that before when I've had sand handy. Make sure you're using wash sand, playground sand, the kind of sand that uh, isn't going to have salt water or anything like that in it because you don't want to add any kind of contaminant to your to your garden soil. Carrots, you would thin them out when they first come up. You can thin those greens out just with a little pair of scissors, a little pair of manicure scissors, or a little pair of uh, garden scissors with the, the fine points. And you're going to thin them out to the correct spacing that they tell you about on the back of the package. Um, once you cut that top off, that seed is done. That's not going to, to continue to develop. So that's how you're going to thin those. And then as they get bigger, because you're doing some fine 
thinning uh, when the seedlings are probably about this big. As they get bigger, when they, the tops start to get about this big, you might go in then and start to pull out carrots because you're going to get some small carrots that are edible, perfectly fine to eat, and you can thin your crop that way so that there's lots of uh, space for the carrots to develop. The soil should be very loose, have very good tilt, meaning that it should be uh, very friable, something that when you pick it up in your hand it's very, very uh, easy to, to crumble. The reason for that is if you think about it, if you've got heavy clay soil, if you've got soil that has lots of rocks in it, those carrots, which you're trying to develop underground, aren't going to be able to develop very well. They're going to struggle to get out in that soil. And so the looser the soil is, the better the development is. Um, last year I was having some fun online with, there were uh, gardeners in England, and this cracks me up every time I see them do it. They're taking 55 gallon drums, basically filling them with sand, and growing carrots and parsnips in them, and then they pull out these carrots that are that are three feet long. Um, Gardening is a bit competitive over there. <laughs> they have lots of societies. Of course, there's the Women's Institute and uh, things where they compete for growing these carrots. Um, it's a good uh, way to see into <laughs> uh, the fact that you can grow carrots in a small container if you want to. You're not going to get a big crop of carrots out of something like this, but remember that you do have to have some depth. If you had a pot that was maybe another three or four inches bigger than this, but this sort of depth still, you could try growing a crop of, parrot, uh, of carrots in a container. They'd be perfectly fine, and it's a good way to get that nice loose soil that carrots want. Um, the other thing to know about carrot Despite what you see at the farmer's market, when you harvest your carrots, you should cut those green tops off almost immediately because those green tops will continue to, to take moisture and sugars from the carrot itself. And so those tops are, are something of a, of a, 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 I don't know what the word I want is, <laughs> oh dear. Um, those carrot tops aren't good for the carrot bottom. So despite the fact that quite often at the farmer's markets you see carrots displayed with their tops on them, the first thing I do when I get them home is I cut those tops off so that they don't continue to take moisture from the carrots. And carrots are uh, another one of the, or, or one of the only vegetables that are so frost tolerant that we can actually keep them in the ground well into uh, the winter season almost. There are some people who mulch their carrots very, very heavily with straw in late fall and then uh, and they're trying to keep the ground from freezing and then they're able to continue to harvest carrots uh, into the winter well past Thanksgiving. Um, not a whole lot else that's real hard about carrots to grow. Root vegetables like all all of our root vegetables like carrots like a good fertilizer. Um, I plant my seeds, I let stuff come up, I let it get about this high then I give it a dose of this kind of fertilizer. You'll see it has a higher middle number. That's phosphorus, that's root development. That's basically what a carrot is, a beet is, a potato, an onion is. So this is a good fertilizer for that. I'm going to give it another dose. I'll give it a first dose when they first come up and then I'm gonna give it another dose about a month later and then I'm probably gonna do it again a month later. It's a little more than it says on the package but I, I don't think it hurts my plants at all. So. That's it for carrots, that's just a very quick overview. This is Paula from Plantland and happy gardening.